Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new edition of Getting Color right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. And I am Virtue after a couple week hiatus. I am back because I was out with food poisoning and dehydration. All right, Vito, let me hear it. I'm going to pass it to you now. All right. It's the BIGV from the LOG. I hope everybody's doing great out there. We're live, baby, live. We're coming to you here with Getting Color. We're back on track. Um, Virtue, you know, I know that you uh, say you had food poisoning and you put those pictures on like Aaron Riff does with his little kitty cat, the waterfalls and his girlfriend. But the rumor has it from, from reliable sources named Dave Meltzer that you're actually on vacation milking the big beetle for every two weeks vacation. Do you have any comments? No, I, you know, I wish I'd, I was lying and saying I was on vacation, but I've lost about seven or eight pounds. This has been a brutal stomach bug, food poisoning, and ultimately caused dehydration. I had to go into the ER for four bags of IV fluid on Thursday. Man, that's, that's the truth. You know, but in your absence, we had Noel Harlow uh, step in. She did an admirable job. You know, it was that was an impromptu, uh, you know, co-host, and uh, she was more than happy to step in your shoes. You know, this could be the Lou Gehrig thing. You know what I mean? It's, you know, Wally Pip, where you just, you get sick, and then all of a sudden, Garrett comes in. Harlow was in there like a shot. She goes, what? Virtue's not what? I, before I even said he's, she was in the seat. Yep. And you know what? If I lose my spot to her, I mean, at least me, Robbie and I can do our show, right? I don't know. Who? Anyway. Who? Yeah, who? Yeah. Robbie who? <laughs> Robbie Vice. Yeah, that yeah. other guy I've had on before. But yeah, you're right. You know what? Yeah. We got to talk about some of these topics here. I know you got some hot topics. Hot we do. Topics. We do, and I got to bring up Nia Jax first because oh, that's yeah. she's back, right? Right, we know that she's teaming with Shayna Baszler now, and they're going for the women's tag team championship against Sasha and Bailey. Two monsters, you know, or you know, vicious women versus the two pretty girls. What do you think here? I hope that Nia Jax finally conquers her demons and gets off social media, which she has. Her, her Twitter has been deleted. Her TikToks have stopped. She's with the Baszler chick. There's no way they should lose unless they turn each other during the match. And Sasha and Bailey keep their titles. That's the only way I see it happening. And then Baszler and uh, Nia Jack go on and do a program. You know, they're hurting for talent. They're hurting for angles. So I could see that happening. Um, I don't know what they have. You know, um, I know. Is Charlotte Flair supposed to be coming back? There's no definite return date. There's rumors that she's going to be out a long time. She debunked those, but right now, just don't know. She's currently out. What happened to her that she's out? Because I didn't. I know she. I did. I didn't away. get specifics, but the rumor is she's had you know getting some things fixed, like things maybe. That I know. More, yeah. Yeah, not enhanced, but fixed because they break. I, I don't know. That's just what I think I've heard. And okay. she, she's out for medical, I believe. So you're keeping abreast of things, abreast of things. Definitely. Okay, good. Definitely. All right, so we've checked on Charlotte Flair's breasts. They are um, not medically cleared. Nia Jack is going for a title tonight. Good luck to Nia Jack. I hope you win the gold. All right. Now, I know you have some other great topics, you know, and That's isn't that true. nice that we said something nice about Nia Jax? Nobody could say, oh, Big Vito's in the, L the BIGV from the LOG was mean to Nia Jax again. I hope she I hope she gets the gold tonight. Really oh, did. she could be a weekly topic, especially if she becomes champ. Now, let's talk about some AEW. So there's, a, right, few AEW. there's a few things here, Vito. One yeah. of them is they're letting about 500 fans in at Daly's Place up in the upper deck. All they're doing is uh, temperature checks. Supposedly, there's social distancing and, you know, the bathrooms and all that stuff's being taken care of. But WWE's still not letting people in. Sports aren't letting people in. So I want your take on this. And also, recently, Cody got squashed by Brody Lee, lost the TNT title. Um, and also, I believe the other topic was Moxley and MJF. I wanted your take on the big contract signing and some of the things MJF was saying about Moxley. So have at it. Everybody loves Vito's take on AEW. All right. So here we go, guys. I think the fans in the building, that's a little bit much. 500 people. I mean, they still have, you know, your quarantines and they're still, you know, watching people. There's still a lot of cases, especially in Florida. There are a lot of people and a lot of people still getting COVID. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So 500 fans in a building, I think is a no-no. 
you know, kudos to the WWE for doing the Thunderdome. I think it was a great concept to get people involved with keeping people safe. I don't know if AEW has the same technology or the money to spend on something so elaborate. I mean, they did rent out the, uh, what was it, the Amex building? Uh, uh, Amway or whatever that Amway, is. that's right, the Amway Center. The magic right. Thing. So, I mean, they actually invent, invested money in the Amway Center to have a, uh, a grander appearance on their TV program, which actually looks pretty decent. I give them I give them a lot of credit. WDB did a good job on that. Cody Rhodes losing the title was the best thing for AEW because he did not move the needle. It was boring. He was trying to be his dad. I did not like it at all. You, you know, Brody Lee should not have, should not have lost the first time you know, Dude, and, Brody Lee, big man that lost, Archer lost, Cage lost, Hager lost. That was becoming an epidemic. So I think right. Brody had to be in here. Well, guys, when you beat all the big boys in the company, who you got left? Then he got tired. The reason they had that open challenge so they could bring guys in from the outside who don't work for the company to build up his record. But did it really do anything? And the matches looked very amateurish. They looked very indie. It's not what you want. You're supposed to be a champion. You're supposed to be head and shoulders above everybody else. Guys, it, I think that they dropped the ball on this whole thing. And if you notice, Cody Rhodes, I mean, Jericho opened the company up with the championship, gave it up. Okay? The Young Bucks didn't have the title. Kenny Omega didn't have the title. Right? Cody Rhodes had to have the title. I don't yeah, know and that. it's interesting because that was after he lost to MJF and could no longer compete for the AEW world title. Oh, let's make this TNT title for you, Cody. Very exactly. fabricated. Exactly. Congratulations to Brody Lee. I hope you have a long title reign and do the things that you could do in the WWE. Yep. All right, so we get into the Moxley thing. You know, you just mentioned Moxley, right, and uh, MJF. I think that it is bad when the challenger, you know, um, discredits the champion. He's the world champion because of something he did, because of the run he's on, because of the hot streak, because of the hard work, the dedication he put into his craft. That's what the champion does. When you when you make fun of or you know don't you know put over the fact that all the things that you want and all the things that he has and all the things that he is and, and you mock them. It takes away from the credibility that you'll gain from when you beat him. This is a lesson for all you young guys out there. Never denounce a champion. Never make fun of the champion. He's a champion for a reason. You know who did this, you know, and we talked about this a while ago. Roman Reigns and John Cena, the most famous promo ever. And, you know, he came and he said, you know, John, you put a twist on things and you, and you do this. You know, and, you know, Roman started shooting on him because he couldn't cut a promo. And then Cena said, okay, all right, now I'm going to chop you down. And he gave it to him. I'm still here because you can't do your job. Which was the truth. Couldn't cut a promo. Worth a shit. He finally cut one, but it took, it took the legs out of him and made him look stupid. You know who else did that? AJ Styles. John, you're not a wrestler. You know? And then John told him, why? Because I didn't spend time on the indie scene. I was built for the WWE. I was built for moments like this. SmackDown Live. You know, SummerSlam, everything. And John Cena, you know, was there holding down, holding it down for 10 years, which was the truth. You know, and like John Cena told me, you've been hot for six months. You just came in here. You know, AJ Styles, what do I have to do to get respect? You're going to have to earn it, son. You, you, you're out there on the indies. The indies are not the WWE. So you're yeah. saying, like, have MJF talk up Moxley. So if MJF does beat Moxley for the title, it makes Moxley or MJF feel more important. But is that in... MJF's character to say anything nice about has, his opponents. It has to be because MJF is talking up his game, right? He's trying to step to the next level and say, you know what? You are a great champion. Right now, you are better than me. I'm the best there is. But once I beat you, I'll be two times the man you are. That sounds pretty intimidating. That's you know? a good point. Um, well, speaking about AEW, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, they still got Jericho over there. Yeah. What's, your, what's your latest on Y2J? Now, I mean, Y2J, I mean, he's the guy who doesn't need the title, and he's in a great program with Orange Cassidy. You, you, like, you like it with Orange Cassidy? You think it's working? Orange Cassidy just seems like such a stooge indie guy to me. 
he does seem like a stooge indie guy, but is it interesting when they do their debates and they do their stuff? That was good, yeah. Eh, it's interesting. It's different. You know, when Jericho's out there playing, he knows how to play the crowd. He knows how to play to the role. He's, he's doing it good. He's putting the kid over, and that's what you need more of today, you know? If you notice, Jericho gave up the title to Moxley because he said, I don't need the title. We started the company. Moxley's the man, and here we are, okay? And how long has Moxley had the title? A year? Has it well, been no, a year? not that long, but he's had it for quite a while, like uh, probably six months or longer for sure. Right. Six, well, six months. In six months, you've had six, six months of good champion, all right? Have the, all the matches been stellar? Maybe not. Have all the matches been decent and good? Yeah. Definitely, all right? And people are turning on the needle, turning on the TV to watch Moxley, so they're all gaining fans. You know what I'm saying? But did Cody Rhodes move the needle any? Did they gain 100,000, 200,000? Or did they have the same demographic and the same amount week after week, 700,000, 800,000, 600,000? They're still in the same thing. So Cody Rhodes didn't really move the needle as champion, so it's time for a change. Yep, and we'll see. And I'm glad a big guy finally won. But yeah, a lot. There's always a lot in AEW. It's always very chaotic to talk about AEW. Now, this is kind of a cross topic here. Uh, Renee Young is leaving WWE. So, with her being married to John Moxley, the AEW champ, is that going to be a destination for her? What do you think on that? I first off, I would like to say congratulations to Renee Young. I enjoyed all of your stuff that you did. You know, you were a great commentator, a great interviewer. You were very good and very knowledgeable. And, you know, for a person like you to come along and elevate women in the industry and talk with the knowledge and confidence and handle yourself, congratulations to you because you did a great job. I definitely enjoyed everything you did. Her leaving and not putting up with some of the stuff that goes on in the WWE, that's a choice. She had a very cushy job. She had a very good position. I'm sure the WWE did not want to lose her, okay, on a personal. And this has nothing to do with her going anywhere, but yeah. as a valued member of the company. Now, did she have some rough trials and tribulations? Did she have some things that she wasn't happy about? Absolutely. So it's your choice. If she chooses to go to AEW, I wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on your new job. I hope you and your husband have a good life and have a good run in AEW. You know, guys, it's about moving around in the business. And that lady has a great future in an industry. She could be on ESPN. She's that good. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if she's done anything in sports. I know WWE's had people that have. But, yeah, there you go. And I think she'll end up in AEW. Uh, now we always have to have, like, some more somber news that we talk about when it hits and stuff. I wasn't too familiar with him, but I know, you know, his son, Scott and Road Dog, but Bullet Bob Armstrong passed away recently. And I just, I didn't know if you, you know, met him, worked with him, anything like any thoughts on, on Road Dog and Scott Armstrong's father passing away? I have to say that I work with all the brothers and it was mm -hmm. a very sad thing. Um, there's a man who's been in the business. He's a legend in the business. Very, you know, we want to extend our condolences. Um, you know. He was wrestling. He was like he's like the the last of uh, the last of the Mohicans, as you call it. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it's a good way to say it. You know, and um, he taught his boys well. His boys know the business. You know, and his boys, you know, they all did a good job. You know, you know, congratulations to that family on upholding a tradition. You know, where everybody participated in wrestling, but um, you know that man right there was. Uh, Probably, like I said, the last of the Mohegans. Yep. Rest in peace. Now, you briefly touched on this earlier, Vito. The WWE Thunderdome concept. So they're not letting fans in, but they are virtually. Now, we've seen the structure. They're, they've used it on SmackDown, SummerSlam, Raw. We've seen all the monitors. But during these monitors, uh, some Bad things have been put on by fans. And you would think if WWE is going to allow this digital world, virtual world of fans, they'd have some type of stopgap. But, I mean, we've seen pictures of Benoit. And I'm not talking about the Mickey Mouse pictures, the Super Mario, the Yoshi, that kind of stuff. But 
beheadings, KKK stuff? Like, how is this stuff getting through? Or is this just learning as they're going because they're just trying to do something great and they don't have all the bugs worked out yet? Like, what is your take on the inappropriate images that have shown up via the Thunderdome? The concept is awesome. Congratulations to WWE for coming up with something where fans can participate. I'm going to say this, and this is, this, is, this is heartfelt because I just went through something today. And uh, I got to tell you guys, wrestling fans suck. In some ways, they really do suck. And, and, and you know what? We always talk, we're, we talk the truth here at Getting Color, right? If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. We're not shooting for jobs. We're not shooting for anything. We're journalists, and we're talking, you know, we're talking from what we see, you know. David from being, you know, on the journalist side more, a little bit on the indie scene, me being a professional wrestler, and then coming on the journalism side, seeing both sides of the fence. Guys, when a company tries to involve you and do great things to make it happy, and you have people out there who want to put these disgusting, terrible, horrible things on on tv it it takes away from what what everybody's trying to do here is the wwe always right are they are they the best company no but when they do something right you got to give them credit they did something right here they did something good right the benoit picture not funny kkk stuff not funny what's next you're going to see child pornography on there you're going to see some disgusting naked photos. This is supposed to be a fan-friendly WWE universe. Supposed to Everybody's supposed to be involved and care about each other. This is the wrestling business, guys. We're all trying to make it here. This is stupidity, all right? And now, you say that, you know, how, how did this get passed? Do they have moderators like they do with no DQ? Do they have people scanning and watching for these things? Watching every cube? I don't know. This is what David said. They're working the bugs out. I hope yeah. they do get the bugs out of it because it takes away from all the good that you can have, possibly have. You know what? If you're sitting at home and, you, and you're being a fan and you have your children sitting there and there's some disgusting thing on there, how are you supposed or you want your kids to have their face on TV, but then you're going to have a guy have the know how and scientific thing to put something bad behind him? Come on, guys. You're better yeah. than this. You're better than this. Re- the world is tough enough. Don't make it tougher. You know what? Wrestling might not be what it was 20 years ago or 30 years ago, but at least they're trying here. Give give everybody a break with the nonsense and stop because it's, yep. it's disgusting. You know what they should do, David? What's okay. that? Okay. You know I'm not savvy in, in, you know, in technology. But is there a way to track people who actually go on there? Like, do they get their, uh, what's the uh, computer thing called? Oh, the IP address? Yeah, IP address. If they got the people's IP address and you put something up that is something that's bad, you should be arrested. Yeah. No, no doubt that, about it. They can see everybody, maybe, though, that logged in that had good behavior and good interaction and maybe just keep allowing the same people back with the better track record so then the trolls are weeded out i mean i'm sure they're going to figure that out you know you, you know david it doesn't cost if you're going to register register to be on right so the first how many people do they have on there david how do you know that no, you know? i don't even have an exact amount i don't know exactly how many they have yeah wwe here's something that really you know crunch in right if you have a registration to be on and it's the first 5,000 people that are on that get registered, you have an IP address, you have a home address, say you get a free T-shirt, something for nothing, right? Everybody participates. You gain fans. So now that you have all these registered fans, are you sure to increase your, your fan base because you're registered now? Absolutely. Are you giving them something for nothing? What does it cost you to send these people a T-shirt, right? So now they're going to tune in every week because they're going to get the T-shirt. You'll be flooded with requests, flooded with people, maybe even crack 2 million people. You know, 
David, are the numbers still down? Are still under two million? No, they're they're finally like Raw is back up real close to two million, and with with Roman back, who we'll talk about in a couple topics from now, they're pushing two point two. So it looks like it's slowly drifting up again. Very good. I'm happy to hear that from the WWE that the ratings are coming up a little bit. You know, it's kind of depressing to see the you know one point fives, but if this is a, a a trend to where it's going to be better for the business and everybody can make some money. Hey, it's great. Go ahead to the Roman thing because I got a, a few a few points I would like to make on this. Well, that's this is for our main event, and um, so yeah, Roman Reigns came back at the end of SummerSlam. So the Fiend Bray Wyatt beat Strowman for the Universal Title, and afterwards Roman came out, speared the Fiend, speared Strowman, and he is back. And tonight, right now, and by the time this is out, he might even be the Universal Champion. Roman is back in the title picture just like that. I know we've talked about this, Vito. You thought he was done with the company. I said, nope, he's Vince's boy. He'll be back. Now they got him aligned with, it looks like, Paul Heyman. What is your take on all of this? All right, guys. I got two ways we can go with this. One, if they get, if Brock is done with the company and Paul Heyman is sitting there, he's going to be the advocate for Roman Reigns and be the mouthpiece we just spoke about this cutting promos. Roman doesn't have to talk no more. Okay? That would be a good concept. The second thing is that Fiend just won the title. People are bitching and moaning that they're never giving this guy a chance. My take on this, it's happening tonight, so tomorrow yep. we'll know the results. Yep. My take on this is that it's a setup where the Fiend... And uh, Strowman are going to continue their feud, or Strowman is going to join the Fiend. Okay, Brock Lesnar is going to crash the party, attack Roman Reigns because they didn't like each other. They do have history together. Paul Hay Heyman fished him in, got the got, got him to sign on the dotted line, and Roman will be an even bigger baby face than what he was before. And I wrote an article a month ago about WWE needing Reigns and Lesnar both back. And look, we have the one of them's back and the other one with Heyman in the picture now. Boom. <laughs> WWE knows what's best for business. So, I mean, this is interesting. I mean, we'll, we're going to I'm sure we will definitely talk about what ended up happening on next week's show. So the big dog is back. But I know, Vito, you were thinking maybe he was done with WWE and Vince was pissed that he went home. Here he is back. And, and the, hey, this could be a rib Roman, you know, to Roman. Hey, you're going to come back and align yourself with Heyman, and then we're going to squash you with Brock as punishment for leaving. I, I don't know, Roman, how much stroke you know, he has. You know, what could be the, you know what could be the flip side of this? You know, I gave What's you two that? scenarios. Well, how about the third scenario? What's Say that? Roman and, and Paul Heyman do win the title tonight. What's to say that Brock Lesnar right in the back comes out and he spears Roman Reigns? Then he spears Heyman. And he's a baby face? And he's a baby face. There you go. I like the it. Place I like it. I've wanted Roman nuts. heel for a long time. I like it, Vito. Yeah, this will be the biggest heel turn or baby face turn since Hogan turned heel. This is even bigger than big Vito Lagrasso turning on Vince Russo. That's how big this can be. So, you know, obviously that was my main event, but... We skipped the topic, and I want to come back to this because I just wrote an article on NoDQ.com, life, life in WWE after Vince McMahon. I don't think it's ever going to happen unless he gets chronically ill or dies. But if and when it does happen, what's the deal? Like, I don't want to spoil my article. I want everybody to go over to NoDQ.com and read my thoughts. I meant, But I'll tell you, I mentioned people like Shane, Stephanie, Triple H, Walt Disney Company. I won't tell you any details, but Vito can give you his opinion right here on Getting Color. What might life be like in WWE after Vince McMahon? Things will be different. I think things will go to where it's more worker-friendly. It'll be more company-based. Um, I think the ideas of Triple H, Stephanie, Shane... I think they'll finally come to fruition because they've been held back by the father. I think that there's a possibility that the wrestling business can grow. But on the same token, you can't knock Vince McMahon because he's been in business for over 40, maybe 50 years. He became he's a billionaire. Yeah, he can't. He's a billionaire. He's running this company. 
He's doing it his way. And like I always said, when there's one boss, you do it one way. And you've seen all the companies who come through the mill, right? And when you see two bosses, three bosses, four bosses, five bosses, and five different ways to do things, it never works. It's one boss, one set of rules, one way to do things. That's why Vince McMahon is the best at what he does. He might be a little out of touch, but his concept and work ethic cannot be matched by anybody else in the wrestling business. So if you had to pick anybody, a company or Triple H and Stephanie together or just Shane, who will be the next one? It's not Vince McMahon. Who will be the next chairman of the board or chair lady, woman? Uh, well, I mean, they've been grooming Triple H for a long time. And, I think so. Uh, they've been grooming him for a long time, but that doesn't mean Stephanie's not going to have the first say. I yeah. think for political purposes, I don't think Stephanie will be the front person. I think she'll sit behind Triple H and let him take all the guff, but I think she'll have a heavy hand in what decisions are made. If Shane is going to be involved in the business, that would be the time for him to be there because his father's not there, you know, egging one on with the other one and seeing who's better yeah. than who. But I think if they gave Shane SmackDown or Raw and they gave Stephanie, you know, legit and let them run it the way they want, I think it could be something different with Triple H supervising and doing doing his thing. But I think Vince is going to do it until he can't physically or mentally, and that could be for a very long time. So stay tuned. I'm sure we'll see what happens. I, I want to okay. add this. I want to add this, guys. Yes. Vince McMahon is a businessman, and I want to get this out. As a yeah. businessman, he is very smart and educated, and he knows his, he knows his way around. As an owner and a person who takes care of his people, he sucks. That's a great He's point. He's horrible. Yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> He's terrible. Doesn't care I did not about put that work. in my article, but that's a great point. He doesn't care about his workers. He doesn't care about anybody else but himself. He cares about the dollar going in his pocket. Yep. So for anybody who says, I just said a bunch of great things. I did say good things, but yep. they're all bad side. And he doesn't give a shit about nobody because, you know, on your uh, WWE network for $9.99, I'm all over that thing. I don't make a penny. Yeah. I guess all good. the money. Good point. Well, great show, Vito. It was good to be back, man. You know, I know we had a little technical difficulties, and the viewers and the listeners aren't going to see that because I'm going to fix it. But thank you for letting me join you again after a two-week hiatus, man. Well, you want to say glad, anything in closing? Yep, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you're back. Um, and uh, let's uh, try to do so, have some more great shows. It's the end of the summer. September is coming up. So let's have let's have a good closing of the year, you know. And what's this deal with Aaron Rip? I mean, <laughs> oh my God, he's um, in love. He's got pussy cats on his thing. He's got his goyle. You know, he's got waterfalls. He's, he's really like he forgot where he came from. We want the show. We want our show to go over to his channel, and he's I don't know what his cold feet are. I mean, gosh, we got a professional wrestler, and I'm already on there on stuff. So, yeah, we just basically got to light a fire under his ass because yeah, but you've been he, saying this. You've been saying he doesn't this want us to overshadow. Him. Well, I have been, but I think we're both going to have to tackle this on him. This is terrible. I mean, he guys. Ignore, he ignores me with this shit. You know, guys in the no DQ. Now, I know the guys in no DQ listen to this. I mean, you guys have been asking me to come back for, what, two years now? Three years? Three years. I've been, I've been saying, okay, let's do business. It's Aaron Riff who doesn't want to do business. You know, he's in love, guys. He's on vacation, the wilderness, walking barefoot with the tree leaves on the floor. It's disgusting. Makes you sick. This is unbelievable. Can you believe this shit, Virtue? Uh, we're not going to give up, even though, you know, we're stagnant. We're not going to give up. We're going to get to him. But anyway, Vito, thank you for doing the show. Everybody, you can follow Vito over on Twitter at the big Vito brand. You can follow me on Twitter at no DQ underscore virtue. Uh, Noel, thank you for doing the show with Vito last week. Good job. I mean, like I said, if you boot me off, then it'll be me and that other guy having to do our little show, but that's fine. That's no, fine. No, no, it's not fine. No, you don't, you're the co-host. You know, I, I did, I would do people Good. who don't know. I did this show with Russo 
And when Russo did, couldn't do the show no more, David was my first choice. And we've been doing it. And there's no better host than David. He does a great job. Comes with his information, his notebook. Even though I do, I do catch him a lot. Hey, David, did you forget this one? No, I didn't see that, Vito. How did you know? That's because I'm a journalist. That's my job. I'm supposed to know. That's my way of making Vito feel important. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching Getting Color right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. That is Big Vito LaGrasso. I am Virtue. Thank you for listening or watching, and we will be back again next time. See ya.